President Trump uh, on the stump has huge leads in every poll you see about the GOP primary, at least right now. Uh, meantime, a tough week as far as Democrats and Republicans, but especially in the opinion pages, for example, the Wall Street Journal for President Biden. Uh, Biden is the perfect Democratic president by Dan Henniger. President Biden won't negotiate, doesn't do press conferences, does only canned events, can't maintain focus, has minimal factual grasp, and his foreign policy activity is totally ceremonial. So naturally, he's running for a second term with the total support of the Democratic Party in Congress. This comes as Gallup has a new poll out, and it's his lowest approval rating yet for his presidency. It's actually the second lowest in four decades for presidential approval. That's where we start with our panel. Leslie Marshall, Democratic strategist. Guy Benson, political editor at townhall.com, host of The Guy Benson Show on Fox News Radio. And Morgan Ortega, former State Department spokesperson. Guy, uh, it is a tough week, it does seem, for President Biden. He launches this campaign. He has a couple of uh, stumbles and the, even the uh, press conference thing that we just talked about with the question. Your thoughts on where things stand? Well, they stand badly for him, and deservedly so. He is not going to—he has not done a good job as president, and the polls reflect that. It's not just Gallup; it's one after another. I saw a CBS News poll had him at 41 percent, 59 percent disapproving. We talked about this earlier in the week, Brett. Seven out of ten Americans don't want this man to run for re-election, and yet here we are together. I think part of that is because they feel like, on the Democratic side, he's something of a safety blanket. He's beaten Donald Trump before, so if it's Trump again, they feel like, okay, that's a matchup that they're comfortable with. I think part of it also is, what's the alternative? If you've got an incumbent who wants to run, it's very hard to uproot someone from that position, sort of functionally, given the state of party politics. And I think you talk to a lot of Democrats, they will sort of whisper and concede off the record. They are not terribly excited about, they're nervous about, they're anxious about the bench. If not him, then who? That question is a very uncomfortable one for a lot of Democrats. And so despite all of the flaws and that litany that you read from Daniel Henninger, which is accurate and sort of depressing, this is who they're sort of stuck with. And I wouldn't write him off for 2024, depending on who he's up against, but the Democrats have some issues right now if they feel like this is perhaps their best option. Yeah. Uh, Leslie, in addition to the things we've just mentioned, you've got the uh, GDP at 1.1 percent. It's about half the expectation uh, that we, we looked at, uh, the economists were looking at. It slows in the first, qu first quarter as businesses draw down inventories, according to Reuters. Economists are cautiously optimistic that a recession will be mild, but they are looking at a recession. And um, that's another sort of headwind. Well, a couple of things with the recession. Every economist I've spoken to for the past year keeps kicking it down the road six months. Now they're talking about fourth quarter. Economist I spoke to today said this is, quote, actually good news potentially for the, the second quarter. And the reason is there were fears of a correction of inventory bloating that would actually result in even a sharper decline than we're looking at than the less than 1 percent difference between what economists predicted. I want to speak to something that Guy said into those polls, though, if I may, Brett. You know, people were saying this last time around in the last general election that my party and Democrats weren't enthusiastic enough. Joe Biden won, and he won with really good numbers. And then again, when we look at low poll numbers, low approval rating, it didn't seem to matter in the midterms. He stands as a, as a president with one of the best records with the midterm elections uh, when it comes to loss of seats. We're a long way from the finish line, but right now, I'm not worried. And I do believe, I've said it before, I'll say it again, yeah. if we have that same matchup, we will have the same outcome. Yeah, I, that's it is interesting, and you're, you're right to point out the midterms. A lot of people going in thought this was going to be a bloodbath for Democrats. It turned out to be the opposite, and he was very successful. But you look at the issues, Morgan, in the latest Fox News poll that people care about. Again, it's the economy. Stupid. 24 uh, percent <laughs> is the lead. Inflation and prices, 16 percent. Gun control, 12 percent. Political division, 7 percent. Corruption, 6 percent. Abortion is below that. It still it, it gets yeah. a lot of attention. Obviously. Obviously, um, how do you see this? 
Well, we've got two thirds of Americans that think that we are in a recession or, or one is coming. So clearly that's not a confidence factor. The poll that you cited at the beginning of the segment, uh, the approval rating for Biden being at 37% uh, historic lows. Um, and then of course you look at things like real wages, things that affect everyday Americans. And for the past 24 months straight, real wages have gone down uh, for Americans. Now the big question will be, and I, and I do think Leslie is right, the big question will be, will we have the same outcome with the same matchup, or will the Republicans bring someone different to the table? It looks like Ron DeSantis um, is going to put his hat in the ring uh, and is going to try to give uh, former President Trump a real fight for the nomination. I actually think uh, even if Trump ends up being the nominee, uh, which polling states that he will now, as, as you pointed out earlier, and makes him stronger to go through a primary fight, you have other people running as well, but he's clearly still taking all the oxygen out of the room. The candidate that's going to win, whether it's a Republican or Democrat, uh, will have to make uh, the American people believe that they can make their life better in the next four years. And right now, President mm -hmm. Biden and Kamala Harris, who may have to take over, this is an old, the oldest president ever, um, right now Biden and Harris uh, cannot pass the test of the very simple question, is your life better off now than it was four years ago? Not a lot of people can say yes to that. You mentioned the Florida governor. Uh, he's overseas and while overseas, uh, hitting uh, Disney while in Jerusalem. Take a listen. that somehow uh, being pro-business means giving companies their own governments. That is not what a free market is all about. They're upset because they're actually having to live by the same rules as everybody else. They don't want to have to pay the same taxes as everybody else, and they want to be able uh, to control uh, things without proper oversight. Disney has now sued Governor DeSantis for an alleged targeted campaign. Disney's complaint accuses the DeSantis administration in part of violating the company's First Amendment rights, citing the governor's recent statement that the board would hold Disney accountable. Guy, how do you see this playing? Well, he's overseas on a trade mission for Florida, but obviously he's burnishing his credentials on foreign policy. I think that's pretty clear. This fight with Disney, there's a real dispute about whether or not Disney's lawsuit has merit. There are some conservatives who are skeptical of retaliating against a company this way. However, as a political foil, a lawsuit against the governor by Disney in particular, in a Republican primary setting in particular, I think probably helps him. I would guess he and his team would be spoiling for that fight. <laughs> Leslie, last word. Uh, you know, the former president is leading by not only double digits, sometimes 30 points in some of these polls coming up lately. I disagree with Guy. I, I think uh, fighting Mickey Mouse was really uh, foolish. I understand why he's in Israel, but people in Florida want him here uh, in uh, the United States and want him in their state of Florida. And just look at the numbers. Uh, this fight against Disney and, Disney and being away from Florida has already hurt Ron DeSantis against Donald Trump. All right, panel. Thanks so much.